le formidable, le magnifique Merdad Hariri. Please welcome the founder, president and CEO of the Canadian Science Policy Center, Merdad Hariri. Election campaign here, wow, but nobody's running for an office here. There you go. Wow. This is quite exciting. Thank you very much, everyone. Bienvenue au dîner de gala, CPSC 2023. Quelle belle soirée avec vous. Célébrer la 15e conférence. Vous êtes là. Merci beaucoup pour votre support. I want to take a moment to thank everyone all the organizations and individuals who supported us over the course of the last 14 years have been engaged with us in any way. I want to especially thank the Board of Directors for their support and the region. And to those who have not yet supported us, an advanced thank you. <laughs> Hopefully in future you found us worthy of support. We'll see. Honorable Greg Fergus, Speaker of the House, thank you for being here. We just want to give you a break from the House of Commons not being hackled and giving a speech. <laughs> Thank you. MP Lloyd Longfield, Honorable Christy Duncan, Ambassador Jesslin, Dr. Punch, Dr. McDonald, Dr. Nimmer, Dr. Kurion, uh, Monsieur Bilodeau, the Board of Directors. Uh, in fact, I have to be transparent that I consulted with ChatGPT about my speech, <laughs> that what it should be. And in fact, it was the first section was very good. And there you go, I'm going to read this for you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and fellow advocates of science, thank you for joining us. Uh, today, we are here, um, oh, sorry, I think I got it wrong. Uh, we are here to celebrate the 15th anniversary of science policy. Science policy is a very important domain which intersects science and policy in an era that grand challenges facing us, such as climate change and etc. etc. You know those better. But I'm not going to read that one for you uh, because I'm going to tell you the story that perhaps chat GPT cannot tell. First, a few words about the impacts of the CSBC over the course of the last uh, few years. I think the landscape of science policy has changed significantly in the past 15 years, in my view, for good. In part, we contributed to that change. We definitely changed the discourse of science policy in this country. Thank you. Fifteen years ago, science policy was unknown and uncharted territory. For those in academia, it was meant about science funding and science advocacy, a topic that was not interesting for bureaucrats in Ottawa. What a quite intersection and disconnection. Very interesting. But CSPC, at least in main part, changed that, brought the discourse of science policy into many frontiers that were relevant to the challenges of our time today. Science diplomacy. What would be the role of science in Canada's international affairs? You saw Nina Fedrov uh, in, in clips that she presented. First uh, science advisor from the United States presented in CSBC, and that made headlines in CBC. So we changed the discourse. Topics such as public trust and science and how we can create trust uh, from public to science. Integration of science into policy. One of the sessions of CSBC 2010 was science in a diverse society. Canada's challenges, Canada's solutions. This was five years before EDI became the mainstream. CSBC insisted that Canada needs a dedicated center to science policy to build sustained bridges between numerous stakeholders across this vast country when it comes to SDI ecosystem and policy issues. To recognize and celebrate the excellence in science and innovation policy. 
and to ensure that science and innovation policy is engaged with public to build capacity for the next generation in science policy. We have trained more than 1,400 volunteers over the course of the last 14 years, which we are so proud of, many of whom, in fact, started their own student-run organizations in their campuses. They were inspired. They felt they are enabled. They can do things, too. And that's something to celebrate, some of whom are here today. But let me tell you another story of CSBC that ChatGPT definitely cannot tell you. <laughs> and that's the story of big ideas, big dreams, and being passionate about the issues. I went to university executives when I wanted to organize the conference. The response that I received was, this is a major undertaking, meaning you cannot do it. <laughs> that message was repeated times and times. I was disappointed, but didn't give up. I went to my fellow postdocs and graduate students. I said, Canada needs a forum of science policy. Nobody said no. Nobody said we don't have money. Everybody said, yes, we should do it. Then we started the project, and that happened. But I must mention the executives, several executives, in fact, who helped us, and their names is worthy of mentioning. As part of our fundraising campaign, I wrote an email to then uh, President of Alberta Ingenuity, Dr. Peter Hackett. A response came shortly. It's a long overdue method, support granted, 25K. We didn't know each other. He knew what he was doing. Also, uh, Dr. Reinhard Reinmeier, Reinmeier, the then chair of the biochemistry department at the University of Toronto, who encouraged me supported us, even you know, uh, put some funding from small department budget for the CSBC. And also Peter Singer, of course, who supported me in the second year of CSBC while I was working for CSBC, but receiving my salary. And the story goes on, and many others. But I have to mention one name, the first person that I met in Ottawa from the policy world. And I was in touch with him by email, and maybe one or two phone calls, we arranged a meeting in a restaurant in front of the Parliament Hill. Paul Dufour, he was with Jeff Kinder there. I think the moment that I got off the cab, he waved hand, he was sitting by the window. I said, wow, I should look really weird and stranger in this policy town that he recognized me in when I just got out of the cab. And then I, I knew that it was Paul Dufour anyway. And the story goes on. And the rest is history. Of course, it was never easy. But having big dreams and big ideas are important. Just one, another example, quick one. I went to the AAAS in 2011 in Washington, DC. Uh, I, I couldn't afford to pay for the conference hotel because that was 300 uh, plus American dollar. I got a two plus star hotel around the conference. And, but I had a dream to talk to then director of this ST uh, Science and Technology Fellowships at the AAAS about how we can adopt that model for Canada. So I'm, I'm sure he, she didn't know what hotel I'm staying because otherwise she wouldn't grant me a time because this guy doesn't, can afford, cannot afford a proper hotel now. He wants to get the fellowships to Canada. But my point today is that the story of CSPC the story is a story about passion, about big dreams about big ideas. And my message to many of the executives in the room is that please risk it. We can innovate things by risking. If a young face come to you and asking for support for a project, risk it, support them, because this is how we can build the future. This is how we can innovate in Canada. This is how we can secure the future of Canada. The future is this. Ladies and gentlemen, let's support them. Merci beaucoup. Bonne soirée.